Our team's presentation is on Raphael, uh, his role uh, and his art and architecture and how it played in the political and social structures of the early modern world. Raphael was a master of the High Renaissance, the period of time from 1490 to 1527, uh, which was influenced by classical art, uh, but whose works were harmonious, emphasizing proportion, balance, and beauty. In addition, his paintings uh, carried major messages of social and political import. To know Raphael is to see some of his paintings and to understand them. So here we go. Raphael's portraits of the popes clearly demonstrate the high Renaissance style of balanced composition and calm beauty. It also highlights the mannerism style uh, with the portrait being so lifelike and true and of which Raphael uh, led the effort for mannerism. Pope Julius II was the prime sponsor to the arts and commissioned much of the works in St. Peter's and, St. and the Sistine Chapel, and as such was very connected to Raphael. What I want to emphasize is the political impact of the Pope's portraits. Pope Julius II, financed by way of the Pope's military campaigns, uh, p p financed a lot of the art by way of the Pope's military campaigns. Pope Julius II believed in the power of the church, and he was the ruler of the papal states, nicknamed the, <clears throat> the warrior pope, and had bribed the cardinals to have the name Julius selected so that he could emulate Julius Caesar. He was a temporal and aristocratic ruler who was known to have a violent temper and often rude. Raphael offered, once offered to paint Pope Julius II holding a book. The Pope suggested he would be better served shown holding a sword. He saw himself as a warrior, not as a scholar. Uh, in this painting, uh, Raphael shows uh, Pope Julius II with a very long beard, which he grew in, um, in mourning for the loss of Bologna and was committed to win back that territory. It, it shows him in a human portrayal as a very thoughtful man, possibly uh, showing him in a very different light than he actually was. On the uh, portrait of Pope Leo the, the Tenth. Um, in this um, portrait. Similarly, uh, Raphael expertly shows the high Renaissance style, which emphasizes prop proportion and balance. And like the portrait of Pope Julius II, Raphael uses beautiful shades of scarlet red, which is the papal color. Pope Leo X was the first Medici to attain the papal seat. There is some debate whether this portrait is dynastic. Uh, since Pope Leo X in the center is flanked by Cardinal Giulio de' Medici on the left, who would succeed him uh, as Pope Clement VII, and his closest relationship on the right, Cardinal Luigi de Rossi. It's hard not to see this as dynastic. The bell and table is a sign of power, and the Medici family was clearly the most powerful family. Uh, they are presented in this uh, portrait as dignified, stalwart men, giving no hint of the chaos into which uh, they would throw Italy and the entire Christian world. Uh, this is a, a masterful piece of realism by Raphael. However, uh, these popes, uh, these men, were terrible, and they really fueled the Protestant Reformation. Pope Julius II also commissioned a series of frescoes in the Palace of the Vatican, which have come to be known as the Raphael Rooms. Of the four rooms Raphael completed, we'll be focusing on the Stanza della Signatura. Inside, there are four frescoes, Disputa, representing theology, Parnassus, representing literature, School of Athens, which stands for philosophy, and jurisprudence, law. The coexistence, clashing, and development of these parts of culture are depicted in Raphael's paintings. And as higher class individuals begin to value art and the advancement of ideas, Art pieces like these became social commentary and topics of discussion for the educated.
The School of Athens is particularly notable because of its fusion of philosophy and science. It is cleverly positioned on the wall across from Disputa, emphasizing the contrast between religious and secular ideas. This makes the School of Athens a perfect representation of the social climate of the Renaissance, which is characterized by its strain from religious into more modern ideas. Now in the painting itself, Plato and Aristotle are positioned in the fresco's vanishing point, which garners most of our attention. And their physical differences represent their differences in philosophy. Plato is seen pointing to the sky, said to symbolize his theory of forms, and Aristotle looks younger and is reaching toward the viewer, which conveys his philosophical emphasis on experience. Raphael painted these two figures to depict the complexity and clashing of philosophies, and cleverly finds a way to tie philosophy's reach into literature and law. Raphael painted two statues in the background. The one on the left is Apollo, which Raphael positioned near Parnassus, representing literature. And Minerva, the goddess of wisdom and justice, is closer to jurisprudence, the fresco focused on law. Touches of symbolism in Raphael's artworks came to characterize the social shifts and ideas, and set them apart as topics of conversation for educated nobles. Raphael was known as the genius of the high Renaissance painters, and was arguably the greatest designer of the Renaissance. Raphael influenced painters up to the 1900s, and he made people think of personality when they gazed upon his paintings. Although he died at a very young age of 37, he uh, delivered a lifetime, a full lifetime's worth of art uh, of great importance.